Hello everyone, I am Poojita from Talent Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to discuss the previous year critical reasoning and problem solving questions from Accenture examination. As we know, Accenture is planning to hire 2023 batch students through on-campus placements. This video will help you to prepare for that. You can also join our social media platforms like Telegram group, Instagram page, and WhatsApp group where we constantly give updates upon off-campus and placement preparations. Links for all of those are in the description box. Before we start, do not forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our video. So let's start. So we are going to focus more upon critical reasoning and problem solving, which was a recent change in the pattern of Accenture. So, the topic of critical reasoning and problem solving majorly consists of data arrangements, flowchart based questions, which I'm going to show you in this video, and data sufficiency, arguments and assumptions, syllogisms, and statements and conclusions. Arguments and assumptions are also there. Syllogisms are there, and statements and conclusions are there. Statements and conclusions are also there. So, majorly, these are the topics that are appeared in critical reasoning and problem solving as per the previous year analysis. Now, I'll be showing out for you few of the questions that appeared in the previous year. So, let us solve. So, first question we are going to discuss is from data arrangements. One advantage of data arrangement for every one major question, you do have three to four sub questions, means you can easily answer three to four questions. So first we will arrange this and then we will answer the questions that are followed out. So there are four questions here. So we will first arrange the data here. So data arrangement, you need to be very careful with each and every information. You should consider all the information exactly. So let us see. There are six participants. M, N, O, P, Q, R. In, a in the finale of coffee making competition. The sixth participant belongs, the six participants belongs to six different locations. They gave us the locations also, Delhi, Mumbai, New York. They gave us the locations and David, the judge of the competition, rated the coffee prepared by the participants on a scale of 1 to 10, giving a unique rating to each participant. Means he is going to rate from 1 to 10, but everyone is going to get a different rating. None of the ratings are same. Now we have the information here. So we need to arrange it. R is from London. Okay, so they said R is from London, but uh, just by seeing this, we cannot rate the participant. Now, the participant from New York got the first rank, but not O. So, whoever is the first rank, that particular person is from New York. New York. So, definitely it is not R and it is not O also because R belongs to London. So, definitely it cannot be R. And they clearly gave, but was not O. So that first person is not O. Only two participants got the ranking in even number. So uh, to make you understand better, I'm going to write all the numbers that they are going to use, which is 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So all of these ranks they used. Okay, The ranking of O is double the ranking of Q. So the rank of O is double the rank of Q. So, O and Q we will take. The rank of O is double the rank of Q. That means what are the possibilities? 2 and 4 is one possibility. If Q is 2, rank of O will be 4. Double. 2 and 4. 3 and 6 is one more possibility. If Q is 3, O will be 6. Or else 4 and 8 is also one more possibility. 4 and 8. If Q is 4, O will be 8. Or else 5 and 10 is also one more possibility. If Q is 5, O can be 10. So these are all the four possibilities. You cannot take 6 and 12 because the ranking is only from 1 to 10. So only these are the four possibilities. Okay. Now we have N got the minimum rating and the ranking was even number. So there is a person N. His ranking is even number. They clearly mentioned this. You need to absorb this hint very carefully. N is even number. Now, only two participants got even number. They clearly mentioned only two participants got even number. That means N is already for even. So, there should be only one more participant. One more participant. That's it. For suppose, if I imagine it as 
are 2 and 4. What happens? Both of them are even. So O and Q will become even. O and Q both will become even. Yes, N is already even. O and Q even. That means three people are going to become even ranking. So this is wrong. This assumption is wrong. 3 and 6, yes. 3 is an odd number. 6 is an even number. So only one more even. 4 and 8. Okay, 4 is an uh, even number. 8 is also even number. So this possibility is also there. Not there. Actually, 5 and 10 is also not possible. Why? 10 will be the highest ranking. And O is not the person who got the highest ranking. So this is also wrong. O is not the person who is at the first place. So definitely this is also wrong. So what is the only possibility for O and Q? It is 3 and 6 itself. O should be uh, O should be 6 and Q should be 3. That is the only possibility for them. So let me place. So O is 6 and Q is 3. And then N is one more even. So the another even will be O. Now it's satisfied. N got the minimum rating and it is even number. They clearly said N got the minimum rating and it is the even number. So which is the minimum even number here? It is 2. So N will be for 2. So 2 is already used. 6 is already used. And no other even number should be used. Because they clearly said only 2 participants are even. So 4 cannot be used. 8 cannot be used. And 10 also cannot be used. Okay, And 1 also cannot be used. Why? Because N is the minimum ranking. Minimum ranking is 2. So 1, no one got so, only we are left with 3, 5, 7 and 9. This four numbers. We have placed this. Now, we will check few more. O got higher ranking than M. O got higher ranking than M. Means O rank is more than M. Okay, 3 is also used. Sorry, Q is already 3. So, we are left with 5, 7 and 9. Now, O got higher ranking than M. That means M will be 5 because O is more than M. So, O is more than M means M ranking should be less than 6, which is only for 5. So, this is also done. Now, we are left only with 2, 7 and 9. Now, who are the persons are left? M is done, N is done, Q is done, O is done, P and R are left. P and R are left. We clearly know R is from London and he cannot be the first participant because the first participant belongs to New York. So, definitely it is not R. So, who will be the first person? It will be P and then followed by R because only two values are left over for us. Just two only we should take. So, R should be 7 and P should be 9. That means P should be belongs to New York. New York. And R already they gave us London. So, only two persons are left. 7 and 9. And we clearly know R cannot be the first person because he is from London. So, R cannot be the first person. So, only P is left over, which is 9 from New York and R7 from London. So, we arranged it. So, only New York and London, we know remaining, we do not know. We do not have any other information also to arrange their places. So, we will see the questions. We did the arrangement. The major focus in this question, you should arrange O and Q. Okay, then it was almost done. So, let's see the questions now. The first question. What was the highest uh, second highest rating given. It is 7. Second highest. First is 9 and the next is 7 which is for R. 7. Next. Who belongs to New York? It is P. The first person belongs to New York and it is P. You can find out. It's not cannot be determined. You can figure out which is P. And next. What was the rating of coffee prepared by Q? What is the rating of coffee prepared by Q? It is C. We exactly got the answer. So it is 3. Option A. Which of the following statements is definitely true? P got the ranking of 10. No, none of them got the rank of 10. M got ranking of 5. Yes. Q belongs to Mumbai and Paris. You cannot say that. We do not have any information about the cities and you cannot judge that. Which of this is definitely true? M got ranking of 5 is definitely true. Option B. See now one major question. If you can solve, you might think the arrangement is going to take a little amount of time. But you are forgetting that you are answering four questions at a time. You are not investing this entire time for one question. You are investing this time for four questions. So you can easily do the arrangement in one or two minutes. So you can easily answer four questions. Okay, so that's the question from data arrangements. And most of the critical reasoning and problem solving session do have two questions or minimum one question from data arrangement. 
so if your plan is to clear accenture then this is one good topic for you to learn for now we will go ahead so here is the problems of flowchart flowchart is not so difficult one it doesn't appear in any apt examinations like tcs or infosys prayer that is the reason you might think it's a different uh, and difficult concept so that's a pretty easy one we'll solve it study the flow given in the following diagram and answer the question follows so here we have the questions p oh sorry here we have the questions they are following this is the instructions of the flow chart p means add number 9 plus number 6 put the result in 3 q is number 2 is greater than number 3 you need to check r divide number 1 divided by number 4 put the result in 10 as number 10 divided by plus number 5 put the resultant in 8 multiply 8 and 4 put the resultant in 7 so they gave us the instructions and here is the flow chart for you so first start you need to check p and then you should go for q if q is s you can directly go for s by skipping r if q is no you need to go r and s and then final step will be t and then you can end the flow chart so to solve this first i will consider p p step add the box 9 and 6 so we have actually boxes 1 to 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 i'll reconsider it here because some of the figures we are going to change the values so now what is the number in box 9 it is minus 4 so minus 4 and what is the number in box 6 it is plus 4 So now add both of them minus four plus four. So that is zero. Whatever you get the result in, put it in box three. So now box three is zero. Before box three, if you observe here in the question, that is minus one. But it will not be minus one anymore. It will become zero now. You need to put the result in in box three. Whatever the result in comes, we need to place it in box three. So that's zero. Now I will go for the next step, which is Q. what q says the number in box 2 is greater than the number in box 3 or oh, sorry less than the number in box 3 what is the number in box 2 it is 0 so is 0 less than 0 no 0 is equal to 0 so it is no for q it is no so if it is no what are we supposed to do we are supposed to go to r for suppose if you got a uh, one is less than 2 like this then it is s so you can directly go for s skipping r but it is no here so i need to go for the step r then s and then t means i need to follow all the steps okay if it is s only r will be skipped now i am going to follow all the steps so i am going for r what r says divide number in box 1 divide by number in box 4 put the result in 10 so number in 1 divide by 4 what is there in 1 minus 4 divide by what is there in 4 2 So minus four divided by two is minus two. We need to place it in box ten. So box ten is going to become minus two now. Minus two. Before it was eight, but right now it will change to minus two. Box ten. Next s number in ten plus number in five. What is number in ten? It is minus two. And number in five is also minus two. So minus two minus two is minus four. And place it in box eight. So this is minus four. and next multiplication number in box 8 into box 4 box 8 it is minus 4 into box 4 it is 2 box 4 it is 2 so overall that is minus 8 we need to place it in box 7 now 8 into 4 8 is minus 4 and 4 is 2 5 will remain the same which is minus 2 itself okay, whichever they ask us to change we need to place them only and remaining are going to be in the same Okay, so this we did the flow chart. So we got all the new values of the boxes. You know, just needs to follow the flow chart, the steps that they gave. If it's S or no, you need to check, or else you need to go with the entire procedure. If it is S, you could have skipped R. That's it. So now we will check over the questions that are here. At the end of the flow chart, which of the following boxes will have the lowest value? Which is having the lowest value at the end of the flow chart? It is box seven, which is minus eight. Minus eight is the least value among all of them. It is negative. So, what is the answer? Box seven, option B. Option B. Next, how many boxes have positive integral values at the end of the flow chart? How many are having positive? Four is having positive. 
six is having positive. That's it. Zero is neither positive nor negative. So only four and two we are four and six boxes we are supposed to take, which are positive. Remaining all are negative. So how many two? Option A two. How many are having positive? It is two. And then what is the value of box ten plus box six at the end of the flow chart? Uh, this is the option A. Of box ten plus box six at the end of the flow chart. Box ten is minus two. Box six is four. So what is the value? Minus two plus four. It is two. So answer is C. So the flow chart is also a simple question. Okay, instead of directly giving you the data, entire data, they just represent it in the form of the flow chart here. You can easily understand uh, the terms and conditions by seeing the information that is given here. So the conditions are this x, p to t, and you just needs to check s or no here. Okay, so I hope you understood. The model of the flow chart also. So one two one question has been asked, uh, in the previous year in critical reasoning session. So that's how the flow chart questions would look like. Now we will check one more. So this is also one good model that has been appeared in critical reasoning. You can say statements and conclusions. So how do we solve it? There are various procedures to solve for. So let's see. First, let us understand the question. What exactly was given? Then we will try to solve. In the following question, uh, the plus minus division percentage they gave us the meanings uh, of that symbols. Now x minus y means x is super senior of y. X plus y means x is senior of y. X percentage y. X is junior of y. X into y. X is super junior of y. Y divided by y. Y is same level of x. So senior means you can use like this. Super senior you can use like this. Junior, super junior you can use like this. But than this, what I'm going to do? I'm going to consider some values. For suppose, let me consider eight as my base. Okay, eight is the base. Now senior means it will be nine. Super senior means it will be ten. Junior means seven. Super junior means six. Why eight is just for my easy uh, convenience purpose. You can take any other number also. Same level means it will be eight only. Now I'll just consider these numbers instead of senior, super senior, junior, greater than, greater, greater than. I'm going with these numbers. Now, assume the information to be true. Read the statements and determine the conclusion that most definitely follows. So, let us first read the statements. What exactly was given in the statements? We will try to understand. So, P plus Z. P plus Z means what? P is senior of Z. That means if Z is 8, P should be 9. Senior. 8 is my base. Yeah. So, if he is 8, he will be 9 as he is senior. And then... Divided by V. Divided means same level. Means V will also be 8. V will also be 8. Both will be 8 itself. They are of same level. V plus K. V plus K means V is senior for K. V is senior for K. That means if V is already 8, V is senior for K means K should be 7. V is senior. So if 8 is senior, junior should be 7. So these are the values as for the statements, as per the statements here, these are the values that we can consider. Now we will look into the conclusions and check which of the conclusion is definitely correct. So the first conclusion, P star, uh, Z star P, means Z is junior of P. Not junior, super junior of P. Yes, correct. No, no, wrong. Z is just the junior of P. P is 9 and he is 8. It's just the junior. If it is 9 and 7, that's super junior. So this is just junior, next class. So it is wrong, the statement one is wrong. K percent is Z, means K is junior of Z. Yes, correct. K is seven and he is eight. Eight and seven, yes. Seven is junior of eight, correct. P minus K, P minus K means P is super senior of K. P is super senior of K, yes, correct. K is seven and P is nine, super senior. Senior means eight, super senior is nine. Correct. P is super senior of K. Correct. So, 1 is wrong. 2 and 3 are correct. Means only conclusion 2 and 3 follows. Option C is the correct answer. 
so you can even use different symbols greater than less than those symbols also but i think giving out numbering will be very easy for us to judge the answer you can easily find out those are some of the questions that appeared in critical reasoning and problem solving in prayer so hope you understood thank you for watching the video please do subscribe our channel for more updates from us thank you